Good morning. I believe that a new industrial revolution is coming for knowledge work. How will it look like and how you can participate? Well, this is video about that. I prepared three examples of applications that work like this, a prompt that you can use to build applications just like this in WebSync, and we will build one together so you are prepared for this future. Let's jump right to the examples. First example is this adventure game. User just provides some of his inputs and choices and gets back a story with text, with narration, and with images. Another example is this personalized meal plan. User provides his recent meals, favorite foods, foods to avoid, and gets suggestions, inspirations, hallucinations from AI in form of AI images, ingredients, and instructions. He will need to go and find real recipes. This is more like inspiration, brainstorming. How will his weekly meal plan look like? Another example that I use a lot personally is YouTube thumbnail brainstorm. User can provide description of his YouTube video idea and get ideas for best practices, thumbnail strategies, and interesting facts that can be used for the video. Or you can just copy a link to existing video, maybe your, yours, paste here, get its title and description, and generate ideas for that one. For example, for this video, which is about Google Notebook LM is a future of notes, we get this kind of ideas. Your new writing companion. This title personalizes the AI tool as an essential assistant for writers, appealing to authors looking for help. And the image for this kind of video. You can download the image, you can copy the prompt. Let's copy the prompt and check that out. It is short, needs some work, a digital assistant icon alongside the writer's desk cluttered with notes and creativity. Yeah, would be good. And yes, you can download it. See, yes. Here is I downloaded the image. Pretty good image. You just need to add a little bit of text. So what these applications basically do is that they take user raw information, put it through pipeline of various components, some of which are AI components, and produce artifacts of knowledge work. I call this assembly lines of knowledge work. And this happened once before. During Industrial Revolution and later with the invention of assembly line, low-skill, lacking experience factory workers would take raw materials, work with them on assembly line, and create physical artifacts that were price and quality competitive and could compete in the market with what artisans like blacksmiths were making. But it is those blacksmiths that were making the factories. They were the only ones who had experience to tell what the factory line, what the assembly line needs to actually produce high quality output. And I think that this is what's gonna be happening next with knowledge work. Experts who know how to convert raw of knowledge materials into artifacts of knowledge work will start building these assembly lines to scale themselves up, like factories, and allow low skill and experienced users to convert their information into high quality competitive in the market artifacts of knowledge work. So this is a brief overview. I don't want to go deeper into this here because I want this video to be about showing and not telling. But if you want to read a little bit more about this, I will put a link to the description into my Medium blog post where I go a little bit more in depth into this topic. Well, in this video, I want to focus exactly on this part. How can you start prototyping these kinds of assembly lines? And for this, I think the best tool on the market currently is WebSIM which allows you to quickly prototype applications even though you are not a developer. And it also exposes APIs uh, to AI to do almost anything, including image generation. And to enable you to quickly start prototyping this kind of assembly lines, I prepared the prompt for you. To use it, you will only need to do two things. You will need to describe what kind of inputs user is expected to give to your application. And you will need to describe to what it will need to be converted to. I will go over other parts of the prompt a little bit later. But first I want to show you how this works. Because I want to jump right into using the prompt. Uh, so I will share with you two links. One link is to a prompt template where you will need to switch those two parts. Part number one is inputs and part number two is here, which is outputs. And second prompt, is a prompt for what we will be building today where I already filled the inputs and outputs in. So what we will be building today is a role-playing game character brainstorm 
where inputs are a role-playing game setting for which user wants to brainstorm possible characters to play. And we go to the fourth part where outputs are name, background story, class, skills, character quirks, explanation how to role-play the character to have most fun, full-size character image. So this is the outputs that we expect. So let's take this prompt, go to WebSim, put it into here, and start generating. There is some kind of bug where it will not show progress on first generation. While I was preparing to this video, I kind of noticed that. I will also be speeding up in the video things so you don't need to wait. So it's here generating already. But I still don't see if it's finishing or not. We can open this debugger, debugger tool. You can find it in Chrome in more tools, developer tools. In it, you can see network requests and also console with errors. For now, we can see that it probably finished. Let's give it a try. Uh, Stone Age Survival Game. So now it's generating characters. We can go here and find the request. Let's take a look. So we can see that it's pending and it's taking time. If you go in, you will see headers, you have see you will see payload. We can see that it is calling API generate and there is a payload with the user input, Stone Age Survival Game, and System Prompt. Generate six unique interesting characters for a low role-playing game set in a Stone Age survival game world. For each character, provide the following details. And well, basically there is a prompt for how the API should work. And we got this kind of error. Uh, so it fails to parse. Happens sometimes, probably gonna happen with, with you. Don't worry. We need to say this. And I want to like try to fix. Try to fix when error happens. Also show raw text response from API. So I can share API in UI to, to user. I will also share this kind of prompt of how to ask it to like provide you with what went wrong. So let's try again. Now you can see that there is like an initialization and now it's rewriting the code. Here we got a new version. Let's try again. Let's go to network tab. See the request. Here it's going again. I'm going to take a little bit of time. While it's working, I want to ask for one other thing. I want UI to be fancy, good looking, like in a game with interesting background. And we got error again. We will copy all of it and ask it to fix. Also, error happened. Check and fix. So, third prompt. Sometimes it works from the first time, but quite often this is kind of complex prompt. It can fail. So, you will need to do a little bit of iteration. Believe me, we are getting there. All you need is to just give it this information, it will gonna fix it itself. Okay, so here is a third try. Let's try again and see what's gonna happen. I would still say that the, visually it doesn't look super good. We will ask again. There is no background for a page that looks good. Make a wrong UI design. More interesting game like Google. So we're gonna use this prompt after we see what happens after the generation. Here we can see the pending poll. We're going to take a look at it when it finishes. It's still failing. Also, there was error parsing. This is what error was. Try number four. Let's 
still doesn't look too fancy, but let's see if it works. Interesting that it said that the URL is Hiatus Comics Com. And it's finally working. So here we got six characters. Grok, Yara, Torg, Lyra, Bran, and Elka. And Elka is a little bit weird. Class of Storyteller. The village storyteller Elka weaves tales of bravery and magic that captivate her listeners. Skills, narration, memory, performance works. Always has a twinkle in her eye when telling stories. Uses dramatic gestures for emphasis. <laughs> Roleplay tips. Speak with vivid imaginary and passion. Invite listeners to become part of the story. <laughs> okay. So it works. Mm. Let's try something else. Uh, Star Wars and Muppet, Muppets, 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 Universe Collided. We play Star Wars in Muppet Universe. Let's try this. Well, you, UI will need some more work, so you can continue iterating. I will share a link to this so you can fork and try your own version. This is the example. User gives his information, it goes through a pipeline of uh, AI that go through a pipeline with the AI components and it generates ideas that include both images and texts. So, Foizio Solo, Miss Piggy Trooper, Kermit the Jedi, doesn't look like Kermit at all, Gonzo the Gadgeteer, Animal the Wookie, and Count von Count Vader, Sith Lord. Once a simple vampire from Transylvania, he became a dark side follower and now counts the number of planets he can conquer. Dark side powers intimidation calculation. Quirks. Obsessively counts everything around him. Tends to pause dramatically between thoughts. Uh, role playing tips. Make everything a counting game. Let your power and cunning show through the speech. Through your speech. <laughs> okay. So that's how it works. It took more iterations than usual to make this work, but you basically iterate with it and you get this kind of results. I will share a link in the description so you can open, play with this version yourself, as well as modify it, so you can continue adding changes to it. This is it for the demo part. I do want to return to the prompt, but before we do that, I have a question for you. Did you find this valuable? Are you a knowledge worker who would be building this kind of things? Leave a comment below. And if you do find this valuable, it's a good time to leave a like. This helps me. Also, if it was valuable and I provided a good service to you, I've just got into the YouTube Partner Program, which means you can start giving me super thanks, which is kind of like tips. And I mean, you know, like if you were in a restaurant, you were provided a good service by a waiter, and you tip him. So yeah, you can leave me a tip if I provided a good service for you here. Thank you, and let's go back to the prompt. So I already explained a little bit that in the prompt, you will need to change two parts, the list of inputs and also the list of expected outputs. This is the part you will need to change, but I want to also tell a little bit about the second part that is in red. This is an example. It's uh, an example from my other web sims where I already build this kind of things. And I give it to web sim so it can replicate it. And I've did this kind of color coding. So this part is the prompt that is then sent to the API call. Now the way web sim works is that they have something like API hallucination endpoint. So if your web sim makes a call to this kind of URL, API and whatever, like in this example it's thumbnail ideas in the prompt. I say that you have access to API slash generate, but it could be anything. And what happens then is that uh, WebSim uses your code and your prompt to hallucinate answers from the API if it existed, but it's actually a LLM model, large language model, answering the API. So this is interesting part. Then I have errors and retries. Thing is that these APIs are a little bit random, so they can fail to parse. And I retry a couple of times. And then we have parsing of API, answer example, 
and then we have rendering part and in rendering part this part is interesting this is also a part i wanted to speak about it's how ai image generation works in websim so here is a code that generates or rather creates an image element and then it creates like and it sets its url of a link to unsplash an image provider but the image doesn't exist and when websim sees an image with a link that doesn't work it does what it takes its alt which is alternative text or accessible text and sends it to image generator gets an image from ai image generator and replaces your image with that so what i'm basically doing is i'm saying hey give me six characters with image descriptions make six image elements that point to non-existent stuff but in alt text have a description of what image should be about and then WebScene takes this creates an image for a character and replaces it and we see ai images in the ui this is all i wanted to say about the prompt uh, maybe and probably you have questions leave them in comments and i will answer them this is it for this video I will be making more of this kind of videos in the future because I want to be building this kind of stuff, but I also want to show others how to build this kind of stuff. So if you're interested, subscribe. And let's have some more fun next time. See you then.